Good morning, or whatever time it happens to be when you're watching this. When I first got into the old school lips of the bronze and silver era, I made a lot of videos on here about their value. And I just wanted to come back and revisit that now after years of experience using them alongside more modern methods. My perspective on this is a little bit unique because I'm not looking at it purely as a historian who just is interested in anything that happens to be old. And while I certainly enjoy the fun and performative aspect of doing crazy old school feats, that's not all I get out of it either. I'm looking for tools that I can use to get bigger, stronger, more athletic, and I don't really care if an exercise was invented in 1923 or 2023 if it helps me accomplish that. So that's what I can share with you. Uh, not only the history, but the value that a modern lifter can find in these exercises. And I'll share a little bit more on that. Uh, but first, you know, do all the YouTube algorithm stuff, please. Um, I'm gonna do a little flex also for the algorithm. We're actually getting some arm gains here. So, a little V-taper, little arm, arm gains. I'm doing the bodybuilding too, not just the uh, old school strongman stuff. But anyway, yeah, do all the algorithm stuff, please. You, you, you guys have been giving me good engagement on all my recent videos, so I appreciate that. Please continue. So here's my perspective on how to approach the old lifts. This is going to be a little bit of a spoiler for my upcoming book, Old Time Lifts for Modern Lifters. And if you've seen my Instagram post where I leaked a rough draft version of the introduction, it's going to be fairly similar. Obviously, don't not buy the book because you watch this video because obviously that's going to have a whole book's worth of detail. So I'm not interested in the old school lifts because I want to do historical reenactment. I'm not trying to get into an old time strongman, uh, you know, outfit and you know with a leopard print and just recreate what they did that's not really my interest um, i think we should be or at least i am looking at them from a functional perspective i'm looking at those eras to find tools that can help me to develop more and to find tools that i can share with you guys to help you develop better um, now why would i think that there would be such tools in that era when we have plenty of modern tools well, here's my theory on that. So my, my theory was that if someone, especially a natural lifter, wants to fully maximize their impressiveness as a natural lifter, they'd be well served to find a, a time when the best and the brightest, people who are willing to go to any lengths possible to be the most impressive version of themselves, had no choice but to stay natural. Of course, I'm talking about the bronze, the silver eras. The bronze, certainly the silver era, right for the end, you know, we know uh, these guys were natural apart from the very tail end of the silver era and that probably didn't have much effect on anything so we know that these people who were extremely ambitious extremely motivated extremely clever you know, were doing anything and everything to be as impressive as possible you can tell that just by looking at the detail they put into their training the lengths they went to the creativity it's readily apparent right Another factor to consider too, is that these folks were interested in how they could achieve their maximum potential to be the most impressive that they physically could be. Cause you're looking at bronze era strongmen, they weren't worried, they were basically worried about how can I put on the most impressive performance for an audience. Um, now the difference between that and modern eras is that pretty much anyone who's trying to be at the top of something is, is trying to excel at something. Not only are they probably using the performance enhancing drugs, but they're also being channeled into one of a few strength sports or maybe competitive bodybuilding. But either way, they're being channeled into one of a very few competitions that have, you know, set lifts, set judging, etc. You know, it's not open-ended at all. You want to be successful, you want to be elite, you have a, a few paths that you can choose and just maximally developing yourself. Like, what can I do personally to be the most impressive human being that I can be that won't win you any competitions, right? What will win you competitions is getting good at this particular thing that everyone's agreed we're competing on. There's nothing wrong with competing, but if you're trying to uh, develop yourself to the, to the max, to be the most impressive human being that you can be, you know, it might make sense to look at people in an era where that was exactly what they were trying to do. There were no, um, you know, set competition. I mean, there were competitions, um, they, they had, you know, usually a set of, of lifts that were widely competed for um, early Olympic lifting and just a lot of the early competitions before then. Even then it was a much uh, wider array of lifts and it wasn't as standardized as it is today. But bottom line, we're not only looking at a natural era, we're looking at an era where there just were not any set channels for you to develop into. So whatever was the most impressive way for you to develop, you were free to do that to impress your audiences, right? 
So that's another benefit um, that I theorized that I would find if I looked into the training practices of these bronze and silver <coughs> lifters. I apologize for my voice there. And three years after getting into a lot of this type of lifting, I've done a little bit of it before, but we'll say three years after getting seriously into this, you know, I can attest that my theory was correct, at least for me personally. I can show you muscle that I've developed that I didn't have before, even after 10 years of lifting. I can show you things that I can do, abilities that I have, you know, mobility, strength. There's lots of stuff that I can do now that I couldn't do then. And I've just physically developed in ways that I hadn't been. So it's definitely been improved as far as myself. I get plenty of reports every day from folks who have seen similar results. So there's something there. So that's what I think we should be chasing. That's what I'm chasing. That's what I'm trying to share with you. Obviously, if you want history, if you want pure inspiration, like these are cool stories, you know, that's all wonderful too. And there are plenty of channels that will also provide that. But the unique take that I'm trying to, um, provide is looking at it from a functional perspective. You know, I, I don't ever want you to just try to adopt an old time strongman style of training just for the sake of it. I don't want you to replace a newer movement with an older movement just because it's older. That's not what I'm here to do. Um, ideally, what I want to do is show you a comparison, show you the value so you can make your own choice and select the superior movement for you. That being said, I think if you approach it that way, you will certainly be doing some of these older movements. Uh, actually, the, the funnest part of my book, I think, at least the most, the part that I'm having the most fun on, it's kind of going to be a, a tier list. Those are popular on YouTube. So I kind of, after describing how and why to do all the lifts, what their you know, technique and everything, at the end I'm doing kind of a tier list where I'm slotting them into uh, top tier, which for me, I'm, I'm making the top tier, the ones that kind of fill holes in modern lifting where you know, there's nothing in modern training that really does what this thing does. That's kind of top tier, which isn't to say it's the best exercise ever, but as far as old time lifts to bring back into modern training, top tier is something that does a thing that nothing else is really doing. You know, on down, you have something that maybe is better than current methods, but not completely unique. On down to mediocre, it's maybe as good as current methods but not better, so it can add variety, but it's not helping. And then, you know, at the bottom, there are definitely older practices that I think really aren't gonna be very helpful to bring back in. We have plenty of useful ways to train that now. Uh, we don't, there's, there's really no reason for anyone to do that other than novelty and fun. And that's kind of the perspective that I'm trying to bring. So you can not just have this vague notion of, you know, these guys were, old and tough and they were rugged and just all, kind of all this, this, you know, these vague positive things. I'm just vaguely doing this old time stuff to be, you know, to be associated vaguely with these characteristics. What I'm trying to bring is an analysis of where these techniques fit into the modern lifting landscape, what we have now that's working really well, what we may have lost for various reasons that we need to add back in. And that's how I look at this stuff. I'm looking at you know, the long-term benefits, not just the fun that I have from doing it once, although it's certainly fun. And I mean, you know, that's a valid reason to lift. Certainly, if you just find an exercise fun, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's still, you know, a good hobby. But I think we can do a little bit better than that on the whole and have fun while we actually get long-term gains. So that's the perspective that I'm bringing uh, on the old-time lifts, on the older years of bodybuilding. I think there's a wealth of information out there. There's also some things that aren't that great. You know, I, I am not gonna put the whole, the, an entire ear on a pedestal because there have been, you know, good ideas and bad ideas all throughout history. Why would you think that one era would just be good and no bad, right? That's silly. Um, so yeah, that's the perspective I'm trying to bring. That's kind of the mindset that I'm trying to promote. It is fun, but we're not just doing it for fun. We're doing it because there's value and that's only gonna happen if we, find the value. So now after three years of doing this stuff, I have a much better perspective on, you know, where that value is to be found. I can tell you which exercises are the absolute top, the ones that there are holes. You, you'll probably get a hint of which ones I favor the most. If you look at my Instagram, I'm not going to spoil it with a tier list right now because I want you to buy my book and I don't want, I don't want you to, you know, buy the book. You've spent money and now you're getting something you already got from YouTube for free, that would be kind of a letdown and kind of spoil it. So I'm not going to spoil that now. 
probably after the book's out, I'll make a tier, tier list video because it's just fun. But um, anyway, that's the attitude we should be bringing to these lifts. Um, and that's that's how I look at it, and that applies to anything else from those eras. You know, there's a lot of wisdom there, but you know, let's let's assess what works for us and what fills gaps. And if we have something that's fantastic that we're doing right now, even if it was invented a year ago, let's keep doing that. There's no reason to go look for a fix to something that isn't broke, right? All right, thanks for watching. And once again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the little bell thing. Uh, if you have any ideas or thoughts about this, I'd appreciate a comment. And thanks for watching.